Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu wa salamu wa salamu. We continue reading from Yama Ghazali's Jawah al-Quran, the Jews of the Quran. We have reached Surah Ghafir, and Imam Ghazali chose 19 verses, 19 Jews, if you will. The first thing that I'm going to comment on is the name of the Surah. So it is known as Surah Ghafir. It is also known as Surah Ghafir. غافر الذنب حاميم تنزيل كتاب الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول also known as سورة الطول so we have two لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير also it is known as سورة المؤمن and here we need to pay attention that it is not Surah Al-Mu'minun Surah Al-Mu'minun is number 23 and this is number 40 in the arrangement of the of the Quran Surah Al-Mu'minun قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون الذين هم على الله ومردون etc. Muhammad Qasim in his translation of Jawahir al-Quran named the surah Surah Ghafir al-Mu'minun which is obviously a mistake this is why it's important to have either to something that is really known to, uh, especially to uh, the educated uh, students of, uh, of knowledge and it might help always to uh, have a couple of uh, editions of the book a couple of translations that you use um, to uh, have a sense of the meaning of the text so even when you read in, in English you would know whether it reflects uh, essentially the uh, the intended meaning, more or less. So Imam Ghazali uh, begins right from the beginning, as we have read, and it's one of the uh, surahs that uh, begins with the uh, with these letters, al-ahruf al and uh, <laughs> and uh, typically it is followed by mentioning the uh, revelation, the book. So, Hamim Tanzil Kitab, Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitab, Darabafi. So, typically you will have that in, uh, in general. There is uh, uh, of course there are several verses that begin with uh, Hamim and they are uh, called al Hawamim seven um, seven chapters uh, seven surahs in a row there are scholars who were not uh, comfortable with calling them Hawamim as it is uh, mentioned by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir and his exegesis of the uh, of the Quran the revelation of this book is from Allah the Almighty the all-knowing the omniscient the forgiver of sin غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شد العقاب ذي الطول the forgiver of sin and acceptor of repentance the forgiver the oft forgiven ghaffar we sin we oft sin and uh, all the children of adam are sinners and the best of sinners are the repenters so the uh, other than the prophets the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
who uh, protected them from committing uh, a grave sins. They could uh, make uh, judgmental mistakes, or we might say khilaf uh, al-awla. But the rest of humanity, they are uh, fallible. So infallibility belongs only to the prophets, and it ended with the uh, Prophet Muhammad, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, uh, we cannot ascribe infallibility to his descendants. This is a major uh, issue between the Sunnites and the uh, Shiites. Repentance is, uh, is open uh, towards the towards the end of the of this uh, surah one might really uh, see that the the uh, belief belief is accepted and of course repentance uh, unless unless death is imminent We'll uh, hopefully uh, get to that, inshallah. But we can say right now, uh, you can change course, you can repent. And not only once, this is not an encouragement to um, commit sins, but if you uh, if you do, if you have weakness, uh, then rest assured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, forgiving. He forgives the uh, sins. He oft forgives because we oft uh, sin, no uh, sin is inherited. No one is, uh, carries the burden of another. It's not sin is not transferable. Uh, but some sins could generate uh, sins even after your death, uh, if you establish a system that uh, inflicts harm on people. If you create say for example even if you create a, a gambling machine that uh, people continue to use after your death hundreds of years or Allah alam how long God knows the, uh, the it will generate uh, sins in your own account in as much if you generate if you establish a system or you you do something you invent something good for people uh, in irrigation, for example, and people continue to use that, أو عمل صالح, that's a, a good deed and it will generate good deeds for uh, for you. But at the same time, it's not really one-sided. It's not that uh, go and do whatever you want, um, believe what you want, um, delay until the very last moment. Also, one is reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his punishment is uh, is severe, so he accepts for repentance, he forgives sin, but he's also severe in punishment and infinite in, uh, in bounty. There is no uh, God worthy of worship except him, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To him alone is the final return. Everything you run away from it to something else except uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you run to him, uh, you cannot either you uh, return to him uh, willingly, uh, voluntarily, uh, uh, lovingly, or uh, otherwise, uh, and then it's of no use. Without belief, without good deeds, without the Imam Ibn Ghazali moves to uh, verse uh, seven, but in between there is mention of the uh, people of uh, Noah, Qawm Noah alayhi salam, who uh, deny the truth. They. Uh, rejected the truth. In fact, in the, uh, the story of Sayyidina uh, Nuh is remarkable because of the length of his da'wah, of his uh, call to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and only a few believed in him, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 
revealed to him, he also uh, ultimately he um, invoked the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his uh, people after all this period close to 1000 uh, years and uh, he was uh, instructed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to build the ark the that ship uh, in which um, the uh, a pair of animals of every kind uh, was put in that uh, in that ship in, in that ark and the believers who were with Sayyidina and Muhammad this is why the descendants of uh, the descendants uh, of Sayyidina, uh, what you see around, uh, these are descendants who were uh, of those who uh, were on the ark. So, uh, the, so when we um, when we read, when we hear the the verse uh, in Allah Sufa Adam, wa Nuhan, wa Ala Ibrahim, wa Ala Imran, Ala Amin. There is something remarkable about, of course, uh, Adam is the real, real beginning of humanity. So when uh, uh, when it is mentioned uh, later on that the uh, this is would be verse uh, 67 of uh, of the surah uh, then the 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 ومنكم من يتوفى من قبل ولتبلغوا أجلا مسمى ولعلكم تعقلون The first part of this verse It is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who created you from dust, from earth, from clay That's Adam عليه uh, السلام uh, And uh, The next phase and uh, The next beginning It's a old, practically a new beginning for those who were on the ark, the rest, uh, the rest, the non-believers uh, drowned. They perished in the uh, in the flood. And mentioning the mentioning the flood, uh, there are those who think that uh, the authors of the uh, Old Testament took the story of the flood uh, from the epic of uh, Gilgamesh. Uh, this is the oldest known uh, written uh, epic. There's a story of flood there, and they thought that the uh, this is how uh, the authors of the so they don't believe there is revelation anyhow. So the epic of Gilgamesh, and then uh, to the uh, Torah, and then to the uh, Quran, but always thinking that it's the work of uh, human beings. The the uh, there could have been uh, as we see today, for example, in the year two thousand twenty four, there were floods in uh, in so many countries around the world. They uh, they said that. Uh, uh, Practically in the Sudan, and of course, this is a very sad story because you, uh, they already suffer from the uh, civil war, the war between uh, the uh, the official army and the uh, these rapid uh, forces between Burhan and Hamid Adib. They don't need the the natural disaster. It's a test. But it's not only in the Sudan. Uh, it has been said that in the uh, in the desert, it, the desert became an ocean. That's how it flooded. Uh, Bangladesh keeps getting flooded. We have seen uh, many places in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west being flooded. So, so it could be the case that there was. Uh, um, these uh, regional floods, let's say, and there could have been a more a diluge which covered the the earth. I was once uh, 
in uh, um, high mountains uh, away from the uh, tens of kilometers from the from the shore of the Mediterranean and I uh, found the uh, uh, of course now it's uh, like the uh, skeleton of a, a fish high in the mountains in, in the rocks okay uh, which indicates that you know sea level was that high and that far from the uh, from the uh, from the sea from the oceans and uh, as a warning all these lowlands uh, could be covered again in water uh, once the uh, the glaciers uh, melt down and they are melting and uh, very very rapidly so all these cities on the shores they will face uh, um, serious uh, rise in the in sea levels so by mentioning that the uh, could be a regional flood, but at the same time, those who were on the ark, it's important to remember that uh, once they uh, they were on land again, okay, uh, when the ark uh, uh, became uh, anchored, stable, um, landed, if you will, literally. Uh, Ustawat uh, al Judi. What would people, uh, the, the people who were on the ark, what would they do? They will speak about the uh, about the flood. So the so there is revelation and there is a popular narrative about the flood or other floods that uh, were you know mentioned in the uh, in the epic of of Gilgamesh and elsewhere. It's a revelation, and in fact, when we have differences between the Torah and, in fact, it could be something in the Gospels. When we have differences, it is the Quranic story that has the upper hand. One part of this story is remarkable because every community plotted against its prophet to seize him, and argued in falsehood, hoping to discredit the truth with it. To seize him, liyakhudu. Uh, so I seized them. That was the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how horrible was my punishment? The flood in the case of the people of Noah, that even his son, one of his uh, children, who was not a believer, he pleaded with him to hop into the ark and he refused and he resorted to the uh, high mountain the mountain the material realm he thought that by resorting to a high place a high mountain he would be saved not on that day and the very last scene uh, the very last scene between father and son, between the prophet and the uh, son who rejected faith, is that the waves came in between. That's the very last scene. So that's also, uh, in a sense, uh, if you think about it, it's, uh, It's a mercy uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, uh, of course, he, Nuh Sam knew that his son drowned. But the, when the waves came in between, he did not see him. He did not see him drowning, which is important. If all the emotions, all the parental care and emotions, good positive emotions, could be put into um, one word, it's... Uh, it is the call of Sayyidina Nuh salam when he called on his son and he told him, Ya Bunay, Ya Bunay, all the uh, care, the concern, the fear for your child, and your child uh, would uh, dismiss 
would will dismiss you, dismiss you the father, dismiss you the mother, dismiss you the the grandfather, dismiss you the scholar, dismiss you the teacher. But here is the uh, sometimes it's the uh, uh, it's the child who is uh, overconfident uh, and thinking that uh, they have the answers. And this is really a serious issue between children and and uh, parents. And so your Lord's decree has been proven true against the disbelievers that they will be inmates of the fire, Ashab al nar Those angels who carry the throne and those around to glorify the praises of their Lord. All the angels, they uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not disobey him. Uh, they fulfill what he uh, what he uh, orders them, what he decrees. They do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, They believe, they praise, and they also seek forgiveness for the believers. Praying our Lord, you encompass everything in your mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who repent and follow your way and protect them from the torment of the hellfire. And they continue with the, uh, with the prayer. Though it is not mentioned in the, uh, in the selection, there were the verses that Imam Ghazali selected as Jews, but it's part really. It's uh, it continues the prayer of the angels. Our Lord uh, admit them into the gardens of eternity, which you have promised them, along with the righteous among their parents, spouses, and descendants. You alone are truly the Almighty, all wise. رَبَّنَا وَادْخُلُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنٍ الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ أَنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ I think it will be very beautiful if you if one of us would uh, uh, pray would pray that uh, uh, his that his ancestors of course the believers his uh, the ancestors the uh, offspring in both directions, uh, higher than the parents and lower than the children, the grandchildren, that everyone will uh, be together, inshallah, in uh, paradise. Uh, we can go back for a second to remember that uh, uh, from a different context in the Quran, that uh, on the day of judgment there will be eight angels carrying the throne of uh, of god and uh, though it might be simply a conjecture when you think about uh, the octagonal uh, wall of the dome of the rock in jerusalem why why this shape where did it come from I think it was inspired by uh, by this verse uh, that the uh, four that the eight uh, angels that eight angels carry the throne of God on the day of judgment. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allahu Alam. As I said, this might be simply a conjecture. Allahu Alam. We move from uh, to uh, verse thirteen, which is uh, next in the uh, selection. He is the one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who shows you his signs and sends down rain as provision for you from the sky. But none will be mindful except those who turn to him. So call upon Allah with sincere devotion, even to the dismay of the believers. He is highly exalted in rank, Lord of the throne. Rafi'u darajatul arsh. 
he sends down the revelation by his command to whoever he was of his servants to warn all of the day of the day of meeting يوم الطلاق رفيع درجات ذو العرش يلقي الروح على من أمره على من يشاء من عباد اليوم ذر يوم الطلاق on that day on that day the day all will appear all will appear before Allah سبحانه وتعالى nothing about them will be hidden from him but even during their life if every second everything is is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will ask who does all authority belong to this day لمن الملك اليوم to Allah لله الواحد القهار the one the supreme it's a day in which every uh, soul today every soul will be rewarded for what it, ha- it has done no injustice today surely Allah is swift and reckoning then it moves there's a um, a bit, you know from verse 17 now to verse 61 so there's a quite a uh, a gap if you will but uh, within these uh, many verses uh, for example verse 21 which is not mentioned here have they not traveled throughout the land to see what was the end of those uh, destroyed uh, before them punished before them the how they ended they were far superior in might and richer in monuments throughout the land but Allah sees them for their sins they had no protection protector from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so uh, traveling throughout the land كانوا هم أشد منهم قوة وآثارا في الأرض فأخذهم الله بذنوبهم وما كان لهم من الله من واق uh, general there are certain uh, cultural uh, traits if you will regarding the study of history uh, archaeology anthropology uh, but it's uh, important these are important to fulfill it could be an individual, but uh, if we have professionals who could basically dig and find what was going on and uh, what happened to the best of their knowledge, that would be a fulfillment of uh, uh, of this uh, of this verse. Uh, we know that the uh, city of Pompeii in uh, Italy. Uh, was uh, covered with uh, volcanic uh, ash and it's almost like uh, they they froze uh, in time if you will and those who were um, whatever they were doing they were exactly uh, when they uh, dug up the uh, volcanic uh, ash they could basically uh, see what uh, what life was in uh, Pompeii at the uh, time preserved but um, we're not going to speak now about the uh, why these volcano volcanoes uh, erupt uh, but this verse in the Quran does refer to the those who were destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah uh, on the edge of the uh, Dead Sea, Madain uh, Saleh, Petra. These were, uh, you know, cities or towns or villages. They were thriving, and some of them really uh, thriving. And then they uh, they disappeared from uh, from history. Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to with signs 
and compelling proof to uh, the Pharaoh, to Pharaoh, Haman, and uh, Qarun, uh, Korah. But they responded, magician, total liar. Uh, they attacked the period, you know, it's a dominant uh, attack on uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And he was, uh, he was commanded uh, along with uh, Harun, Aaron, his brother, uh, Ali alayhi salam, to speak softly, kind, you know, to uh, to the Pharaoh, uh, so that hopefully he would uh, change course and believe. But of course, uh, he insisted on disbelief, uh, arrogance, and he decided to kill the children uh, of those with uh, Sayyidina Musa salam to keep the women. So then, uh, when he came to them with the truth from us, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said, kill the sons of those who believe with him and keep their women. But the plotting of the disbelievers was only in vain. And the Pharaoh who wanted to kill Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, uh, let me kill Moses and let him call upon his Lord. I truly fear that he may change your traditions or cause mischief in the land. Uh, disrupting the, uh, this, uh, the this kind of status quo, if you will. Uh, there are always those who benefit from uh, uh, the status quo. Mo, Sayyidina Musa salam, replied by saying, I seek refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant person. That's the Pharaoh, really, and his uh, entourage who does not believe in the day of reckoning. And uh, a believer uh, from the uh, people of the Pharaoh, uh, an Egyptian, who was hiding his faith, uh, argued, will you kill a man only for saying, my Lord is Allah? Well, he has in fact come to you with clear proofs from your Lord. If he is a liar, it will be to his own loss. But if he is truthful, then you'll be afflicted with some of what he is threatening you with. Surely Allah does not guide whoever is a transgressor, a total liar. The, there is mention of other uh, peoples, uh, mention of uh, Sayyidina Yusuf السلام, and because his, uh, his uh, prophecy uh, his, uh, was in, uh, primarily in Egypt. But ultimately the Pharaoh uh, wanted Haman to build him a high tower, so so that he could uh, reach the pathways. Why? Because he wanted to uh, look for the God of Moses. That's, and uh, he thinks that, uh, or he thought, of course, that you could see the God of, uh, of Moses from uh, a tower, not uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is like unto him. In the Next uh, group of uh, verses that Imam Ghazali selected, verse 61. Allah It is Allah who has made the night for you to rest, to rest in, and the day bright, meaning you, know, you, you seek um, sustenance, you do whatever is necessary, and wholesome and good and uh, halal uh, during the uh, the day. Yeah. Of course, there are uh, essential jobs that should be maintained during the night, but uh, the night is uh, unlike the uh, new way of life where people continue simply. Uh, um, I'm not talking about those who study. I'm not talking about those who pray. I'm not talking about those who need to work firefighters, policemen, uh, medical staff in emergency rooms and uh, in different departments, you need, uh, you will always need uh, people even at night, but just think about it, why really uh, stay up at night uh, when you do not uh, uh, have anything uh, uh, I'm talking about literally way into the night and then you'll miss the uh, early 
uh, hours or you will wake up and then you will be tired and you will drag yourself. That's not the way uh, to do it. So we are going against our own nature and all those achievers now uh, uh, around the world, they even could be none, uh, of course there are non-Muslims. They speak about getting up very early in the morning and before the morning really. Uh, they speak about uh, even meditation uh, because it's not fashionable to speak about worship, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do exercise, they do. So the, uh, these early hours are uh, very uh, vital in setting the tone for the rest of the of the day and then really for your uh, for your life. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Allah, your Lord, the creator of all things. There is no God worthy of worship except Him. How can you then be deluded from the truth? This is how those who used to reject Allah's signs were also deluded. It is Allah who made the earth a place of settlement for you and the sky a canopy. Uh, he shaped you in the womb, meaning he, the womb in brackets. He shaped you, perfecting your form. Uh, and he has provided you with what is good and lawful. That is Allah, your Lord. So blessed is Allah, Lord of the all of all worlds. He is the ever living. Al Hay, who al Hayu la ilaha illa hu fadhuhu muhlis illa hu din. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. He is the ever living. There is no God worthy of worship, of course. There is no God except Him. So call upon Him with sincere devotion, saying, All praise is for Allah, Lord of all worlds. It is He. Verse. Uh, 67 he is the one who created you from dust then from a sperm drop then uh, uh, from a clinging uh, clot then he brings you forth uh, as infants you are born so that you may reach your prime and become old, though some of you may die sooner. Babies, youngsters, reaching an appointed time, so perhaps you may understand Allah's power. He is the one who gives life and causes death. When he decrees a matter, he simply tells it, be, and it is. This is why they say, uh, the divine or the divine decree is between al kaf and nun kun then in English it will be like between the B of B and the E the last couple of uh, verses that Imam Ghazali selected uh, the verses 79 and 81 and uh, we'll conclude with these with these uh, two الله الذي جعل لكم الأنعام لتركبوا منها ومنها تأكلون ولكم فيها منافع ولتبلغوا عليها حاجة في صدوركم وعليها وعلى الفلك تحملون It is Allah who made cattle for you so that you may ride some and eat others Really eat others but could be the same ones that you ride you might ride the camel and you might eat from the uh, camel if there's a need. And you find in them other benefits, of course, and by means of them, you may reach destinations you desire and you are carried upon some of them and upon ships also, of course, subhanAllah. In, uh, uh, in other um, contexts in the Quran, for example, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, there's also reference to the... Uh, to the beauty after fulfilling the function, these animals. 
فيها جمال حين تريحون وحين تسرحون سبحان الله With this we conclude this, uh, this selection of this uh, chapter from uh, Surah Ghafir and next will be Surah Fussilat 12 verses until then insha'Allah Subhanakallah wa hamdika shadu la ilaha anta sakhiru kutub alaykum salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh